So, another thing let us get back to what I had postponed, I have been answer, I am saying that I will I will answer it later, I will answer it later. Now, I think one of you should answer me, why for a flat plate dp by dx is 0? Why for a flat plate case? We are now into external flows, now you can shoot any question. Why is dp by dx equal to 0? In all textbooks it takes, of course, few guys try to take pains to make us understand and few guys do not. Why do you think it is 0? See, let us let us write the momentum equation once again. U del u by del x plus v del u by del y is equal to minus 1 by rho del p by del x plus nu del squared u by del y squared. I am not writing del squared u by del x squared because I know that it is not important. Now, if I write this equation for the outside of the boundary layer. I am getting out of the boundary layer now. I am getting out of the boundary layer. What will be my u? u infinity square, u infinity square, u infinity, u infinity into d u infinity by d x. Why? Because u infinity, what about next term? What about next term? Why? Why is it 0? v is not there, v is not there, this is 0 because v is not there. What happens to my next term? Minus 1 by rho d p infinity by d x, I am going to call it as p infinity, okay, because I am outside. What about the next term? What will happen to next term? Will it become new d squared u infinity squared divided by d y squared? Yes, it is 0. Why it is 0? Yes, there is no viscosity, there is no viscosity. What is this equation by the way? What is this equation? What is this equation? What is this equation? If you integrate this, what do you get? It is a very familiar equation, Bernoulli's equation. <laughs> Yesterday I told no, from Navier Stokes you can reach Bernoulli's provided if I throw my viscous terms. But what is this equation telling me? What was the question I asked? Y is P in P 0, but what is this equation telling me? Flow over a flat plate, u infinity is, u infinity is constant. So, what will happen to my d p infinity by d x? 0. So, what does it tell? What does this tell? This is the pressure which is being, being imposed on my boundary layer. The pressure which is there outside has to impose itself onto the boundary layer. That is how the inviscid, we are, what did Prandtl do us? He, di he differentiated, he differentiated into two layers. One was the viscous portion, another was the inviscid portion. So, how will inviscid portion talk to viscid portion? How will the interaction happen? Through this pressure term, through this pressure term. If I know in an in, that is how inviscid solution is also important. In the inviscid, from the inviscid solution, what will you get? From your inviscid equations, which you have done doublet and all, I do not know whether you remember or not, you get the u infinity variation for flow around a cylinder for example, u infinity sin x you get. For various profiles, you get u infinity variation. What am I going to use that? It will give me the, it will give me the, see this equation. If I know the velocity distribution around my bluff body in inviscid portion, which I get from inviscid solution, I will get my pressure variation. That pressure variation is what I am going to impose in my impose in my boundary layer equation. That is how inviscid portion is going to talk to with my viscid portion. So, it is not inviscid solutions are useless, that is not right statement. That is what Prandtl did it to us, that is the greatness of Prandtl. Okay? So, now coming back, what was the question we asked ourselves? Now, I can answer, u infinity is 0, u, sorry u infinity is 
constant for flow over a flat plate. So, d p please note this down, this is what we need to tell our students. Otherwise, you cannot answer my student, why is d p by d x equal to 0 for a flow over a flat plate. Most of the textbooks are not going to tell us this. Okay? So, that is how you get So, let me repeat, Professor Arun says that we need to repeat this. See, what did I do? I took the momentum equation, applied it for, so I have, I have flow over a flat plate if I take, I have boundary layer which is viscid portion I am calling. Why am I calling viscid portion? Because that is where the viscosity is important, I cannot neglect viscous forces. But now all this portion, all this portion is inviscid portion, I can get away without taking viscosity. So, if I solve inviscid equations, I am going to get my u infinity variation, flow around a cylinder, if you might be remembering, Venu correct me, flow around a cylinder is it right, u infinity sin x, u equal to u infinity sin x, it, it is u infinity sin x with my x varying from radially. Okay? I may be wrong little bit, but yeah, something like that. So, point is I get this flow distribution, u infinity distribution as a function of x from my, from my inviscid solution, inviscid equation. That I will use to get my inviscid equation, of course, I am not doing that, but I will have to tell that, that is it. Inviscid equation gives me u infinity as a function of x. That u infinity of x, I am going to get use and get my, get my d p infinity by d x. This is what is being imposed, imposed on my on my boundary layer, very beautiful it is actually. Okay. We cannot study inviscid now, but it is very nice if you can demonstrate. Let me see before uh, our general workshop, if I can cook a small case and show that this is how it is. So, that I will make a transparency, whatever I am writing. Now only, see when I am teaching, when we are teaching, we teach this on the board. But now only I am realizing that it has to come on the power point. Yeah. Yes, it is the beginning. I have to come from there only. I cannot go this way, I have to come from there. From inviscid portion to viscid portion. Here we are lucky for a flow. That is precisely why we take flow over a flat plate. Why? Because we can throw my d p by d x. So, when I say imposed on the boundary layer, I mean that del p by del x is equal to d p infinity by d x or I should be writing d p by d x equal to d p infinity by d x. That is what I mean when I say it is imposed on the boundary layer. If you want better treatment of what I have told, either this I have learnt from Professor Anderson's textbook. I have not learnt this from anywhere else, but touch and go is there in boundary layer theory by listing. Okay? But proper better treatment is there only by aerodynamics by Anderson. Anderson. I would recommend strongly that all of you read, as a story you can read aerodynamics by Anderson. Okay? So, okay. now coming back, now coming back, let us, uh, now there are two points. Now, let us get back to this, whichever derivation we were doing earlier. What were we doing? This was, this is what we did. Okay. Now, let me apply the scale to x momentum equation. What is my x momentum equation? Reduced x momentum equation, I am writing same thing again and again, but that is okay, because it should get registered in your mind. So, so much so that even while travelling back, when you are mananing this, you should be getting it in your minds. u del u by del x plus v del u by del y equal to minus 1 by rho d p by d x is not there now, because we have appreciated that that is 0, nu into del square u by del y square. What is the scale of the right hand side, left hand side? Just see, 
u infinity squared by n. This should be of the same order of what is there on the right hand side? Nu u infinity by delta square. Okay? Now, very beautiful answer I am going to get now. Okay? Let me write this as delta squared on the left hand side. They are of the same order, huh? they are not equal. Delta squared is of the order of what do I get? Can anyone help me with the algebra? Praveen Savarkar. Delta squared is of the order of nu by nu L, L by u infinity. Let me divide both sides by L squared. Let me divide both sides by L squared. What do I get? Delta squared by L squared, which is of the order of nu by u infinity L. What do I get now? What do I get? This implies delta is of the order of L. What is this u infinity L by nu? R e L to the power of to the power of minus 1 by 2. So, if you derive from similarity solution, what is it you are going to get? You are going to get a constant delta by x. You use this correlation very left and right delta by x equal to some constant into r e to the power of minus half r e x. You see without I have done no mathematics. I have done no mathematics, but I have reached the solution. I can even reach up to C f. I can even reach up to C f, but why I did this because I am going to take a similarity variable eta equal to, I am going to use a similarity variable eta equal to y into u infinity by nu x. Because what am I trying to do? In semi infinite medium, what did we do? In Nitin Gulhane, please tell me what did we do in semi infinite medium? I am able to see your name, that is why I am calling you, no other intention. Okay. <laughs> you better <laughs> remove that if you do not want me to. <laughs> so, you are getting caught too many times. Yeah, maybe Mariyappan Vairavan. What did we do in semi infinite medium? We reduced the t equation, which was the function of x and y, x and del t to eta. So, p d e was converted to o d, that is precisely what we are going to do. This p d e I want to convert it into O D E. So, I am going to write, huh, now can you link these two equations and tell me why did I write eta equal to y into square root of u infinity by nu x? See for a minute and you can do it. Only thing is that you have to take delta as y and x as yeah, L as x. Is that right? Is it obvious? Should I be doing that? No, I guess. Hemant is blank. Hemant could not see. No problem. So, what did is? What is it? I wanted to go fast, but that is okay. That is y by x is of the order of r e x to the power of minus half. So, what am I doing? What am I doing? So, uh, is just there, it is just there y into square root of, yeah, yeah, that is if I, oh, okay, 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 you push it, na. y is of the order of x into, what is r e x? u infinity x by nu square root, you should be helping me here, but I am not getting any help from you, is that right? y by x, am I, am I, no, no, ha, 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 sorry, this is wrong, this is wrong, y is of the order of x into square root of nu upon u infinity x. So, what do I get? y is of the order of square root of nu x upon u infinity. Now, you should be seeing why eta is like that. I have just taken eta equal to y into square root of 
u infinity by mu x. Okay. So, now professor will take over and so that is how eta choice is important, but I think two points I want to summarize at the cost of being dubbed as repetitive. One thing is dimensional similarity we should emphasize students number one, whether even if you are teaching integral approach and second thing is that how inviscid portion talks with the viscid portion. These two points if we emphasize them, they will not be scared of boundary layer theory anymore in their life. Yeah. So, now what is that I am doing? Now, rest is mundane, rest is mundane. I say mundane because it is all algebra correlations. The point is I have understood that friction factor. I am going to see correlation friction factor. In friction factor correlation, what is that I am going to see? R Reynolds number and Nusselt number correlation I am going to see Reynolds and Frank. And now we can see that Reynolds for flow over a flat plate, I am going to see friction factor Reynolds number to the power of minus 0.5. Okay. So, you, you now know that because we have derived that already. Uh, yeah. uh, he wrote Nusselt number you know we have not defined Nusselt number as yet. Uh, you know there was a transparency yesterday which we said we will come back later. Yeah. What is the physical meaning of Nusselt number? That is right. He wrote uh, d uh, partial derivative of t star with yeah, let me partial Let me open that again because it is good to because that is the definition of this one. And then there was a transparency which had a Nusselt number uh, definition introduction to convection hmm. one. no i have written now h equal to i will h equal to minus k del t by that is right h equal to minus k del t by del y at y equal to 0 upon t s minus t infinity morning also we reminded ourselves about this equation so this was h but now what professor is asking is Nusselt number. We consciously skipped that because we thought that once we get enlightened with all the background we will come back to this. Now someone said convective resistance and conductive resistance, professor wants the elaboration on that. It is a greater measure of convection relative to the conduction in the same in the same medium. Where is media. media right. Full media or which part of it? Because Ah, that is that is very important because textbooks tell us q convection upon q conduction equal to h delta t upon k delta t by l. Question is l is what? Question is l is what? You rightly said that l is boundary layer thickness. It is not the pipe diameter or the flat plate thickness. because conduction where is the conduction happening? just within the boundary layer. So, that we have to because even Changal writes this as H L by K, but I guess he knows that we have understood that it is boundary layer thickness that is what he is assuming. This has been taken from Changal only, but we need to emphasize that this L is not the characteristic length, it is delta then only this Nusselt number equal to 1 has a what is that meaning N u equal to 1 means? conduction equal to convection that is conduction within the boundary layer that has to be emphasized. Is that okay? Is it within boundary layer or at the no slip layer? Conduction through the no slip layer and then convection over it. No, convection means we always attribute that conduction within the boundary layer. No slip means what you are coming back? Yeah, coming back as uh, right your, your, your puristic thing is minus k del t by del y at y equal to 0. Who is deciding my del t by del y at y equal to 0? Who is deciding me that? My temperature profile within the boundary layer. Both answers are right. Both answers are right. Del t, if you, you, what, you what is that you are telling is? It is del t by del y at y equal to 0. Why should I care about y equal to little above? But I am saying I should care about that because that is what is going to decide my del t by del y at y equal to what came first? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. temperature gradient uh, is is a function of the heat transfer coefficient. Heat transfer coefficient is dictated by the temperature gradient. Again, temperature gradient is dictated by yes. the heat transfer. Yes, yes, yes. So, 
the orientation effect in the cell phone? Orientation effect, we postpone this question, we have that. That is flat plate, na? No, orientation effect means what? Uh, how is the plate, vertical plate? I have to do, I have to do experiments. If it is laminar, I can perhaps get the solution. Yes, we will decide, okay, you should be able to answer now. How will, how will I get, for different orientations, how will I get the answer? or nacelle number, how will I get, who is giving me for flow or a flat plate nacelle number, really, that is the velocity distribution. For orientation also, for orientation also, I will have to get my velocity distribution and the temperature profile. But then in that case, dp by dx, I cannot take it as 0. Did I answer your question or not, I do not know. Now, what was your question? My question is, it, 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 it is a characteristic length only. Here, for nacelle number. No, this is because, okay, 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 okay. I understood your question now. See, why I do not define nacelle number as h delta by k? Why do not I define it as h delta by k? Actually, it is obtained to the energy balance at that time, mostly there. No. Why I do not define nacelle number as h delta by k, I take it as h l by k and take characteristic lens. Ultimately, what is, what is that I am trying to do? If you get back, I want what? Heat transfer coefficient, right? I have to non-dimensionalize heat transfer coefficient and I have non-dimensionalized non nacelle number in terms of characteristic length, but not delta. Why? Do I know delta a priori for any, any, any any case, do I know delta? I do not know. So, I should be representing that in terms of characteristic length. It is an engineering necessity, that is all. Huh. So, suppose one cylinder is there, there is a convection uh, forming surface hmm. and it is placed horizontally hmm. from one case, okay. and it is vertically side of oh, No problem. So, in both the cases, we yes. are taking care of diameter in one case and land in second case. Yes, correct. So, I think, uh, uh, no, 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 here what we mean by saying that, there are two things here. We are, we are mixing up two things. It is, this is not particularly for internal or external or jet imp in general, general. H delta by K should be the nacelle number definition, okay. Why, we, if I have to understand it as convective resistance to conductive resistance. But I define nacelle number in terms of characteristic length because I do not know delta, delta. Because why we alerted you? Because nacelle number 1, if I take L, has no meaning. It has to be delta, it has to be delta. The point here is, we give nacelle number correlation in terms of characteristic length because I know characteristic length and I know velocities and I know fluid properties. That is why we define as <coughs> number in all correlations in terms of characteristic length. But that does not tell if that characteristic length based nacelle number is less, they, let us say equal to 1. You cannot say that conductive resistance equal to convective resistance. That is all I am telling. That is all I am telling. So, originally we think the boundary length. Yes. But uh, for, our For our engineering necessity, I have to take correlation, I have to use it, no? Length. Okay. I guess now I have read. That is how I think you wanted to get. Fine, no problem. Please bear with me if I am impatient. Okay? Yeah. Sir, it is only because you want to make it dimensionless, you take that. Correct, 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 correct. Even Reynolds number for that matter, we take rho V L by mu. Okay? It is actually inertia and viscous force within the boundary layer. I should be taking there also delta. Of course, outside the boundary layer is not there. Isn't it? Isn't it? Why I, I cannot take boundary layer thickness because I do not know. So, that is why I take characteristic. That is why, in fact, that is a good point. I got the point. Why I get transitional Reynolds numbers different for different class of problems? For flow over a flat plate, my Reynolds number, very good point. Now, I will make you understand. Reynolds number, critical Reynolds number, transitional critical Reynolds number for flow over a flat plate is 5 into 10 to the power of 5. R E pipe, R E D defined on the characteristic length of the diameter of the pipe is 2300. 
for jet impingement r e is around 100 why they should be different now let me define on the basis of boundary layer thickness it will be of the order of 10 bejan has shown this you take the boundary layer thickness relevant to flat plate or to flow through pipe or for jet impingement or for natural convection then R e delta is of the order of not 10 sorry 100. Anything exceeding 100 will be Reynolds, anything less than 100 it will be laminar. I have reached you now, I have reached you. So, R e defined on the basis of delta is unique, is unique, but R e I always define on the basis of characteristic length, why because that is my engineering necessity, I have to use it, ultimately I have to use it, I do not know delta no, for every case my delta is different, I cannot generalize it that way, that is how it is, now I have reached it, now I have reached it, okay? Okay. that was a good question, huh? that was a good question, really good question, although I was impatient, please bear with me my impatience, okay? because I have to have an another objective of I have to complete things in time, okay? so I have to two rough edges I have to or I mean smoothen them, fine, no problem. So, now what is that? Yeah, flow over a flat plate. Now, I will tend to go fast. So, now that velocity profile I know and temperature distribution, this is the continuity equation, momentum equation and the energy equation. So, now these are the boundary conditions. Now, I know eta if I take this and non dimensionalize, sorry, transform these equations in terms of eta, I get my equation as f triple prime plus f f double prime by 2, where f is u by u infinity is f prime. Okay? I am going to go very fast, I know, but if you do that all that algebra and you get this equation with the appropriate boundary conditions, if you solve that is these are the boundary conditions, you are going to get that r e equal to sorry delta equal to 5 delta by x, we saw no, delta by x is of the order of R e x to the power of minus of, that is what it is. All that I am now getting is 5 by solution, you see the power of scale analysis, you see the power of scale analysis. So, then you get from this delta, you get tau wall equal, tau wall equal to mu into del u by del y, you get C of x relation. Okay? You, when you go back home, you see this algebra. I do not want to spend time on this algebra because I want to focus on insights only. So, C of x equal to what is that you get? 0.664 into R e x to the power of minus r. Is that okay? So, that is how you get the shear stress. Now, similarly, you can do the energy equation also by similarity solution. You get theta double prime plus Prandtl into f theta prime by 2 and if you solve that equation, you are going to get delta t equal to 5 x upon p r to the power of 1 by 3 upon r e x. Okay. In fact, we can do this from scale analysis also, okay, but I am not going to do that. Okay. So, you can show that the boundary layer, thermal boundary layer thickness is this. So, all that you are seeing is what? Delta t by x is of the order of r e and p r. So, R e x to the power of half and P r to the power of 1 by 3. So, the solution for turbulent uh, laminar flow is C f x is this and for turbulent flow C f x is this. We can derive also, but this has been corroborated through experiments also. Okay. So, sorry, uh, that brings us to the last, yesterday I made a mistake. I said for flow over a flat plate, Professor Arun was right, I was wrong. C f x was, Professor Arun said, boundary layer thickness, turbulent boundary layer thickness, you asked a question yesterday, are boundary layer thickness grows faster, is thicker in turbulent boundary layer compared to laminar we showed, but I told re to the power of 0.8, it was wrong, professor was right, re to the power of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, but still nevertheless it does not matter why, because re is very high that makes it thicker, you can go back and check it out, okay? but I was wrong because I had told re to the power of 0.8. So, now we have to be worried because I have recorded that. So, that I have to correct it myself. That is what it occurred to me in the night yesterday.
fine. So, I thought anyway I will correct it here. So, this is these are the C f x's. Okay. Now, if we integrate the way we integrated yesterday for local heat transfer coefficient, if I integrate that, I will be getting the average friction factor. Okay. So, now rest is straightforward. What is that we what is that we will get correlations for rough surface, smooth surface, all those cases. And similarly, you will get Nusselt number. Nusselt number you will get 0.332 R e x to the power of 0.5 P r to the power of 1 by 3 for Prandtl numbers. This is valid only for Prandtl numbers greater than 0.6. This is not valid for which which fluid it is not valid for liquid metals, because liquid metal is lead, tin, sodium, okay, these are all used in nuclear reactors. So, the Prandtl number is 0 0.002, 0 0.03, lead is around that. Okay. So, very low Prandtl number, this equation is not valid for that, we have a different equation. And this is again, we can derive it also and we can do through experiments also for a flow or a flat plate. But in general, I want to make a statement. In general, irrespective of the class of the problem, what we are handling, for laminar cases only you can, what is the statement? For laminar only you can derive, you can derive. For turbulent, it is not possible to derive. For few cases, for flow or a flat plate you can derive, but flow through pipe you cannot derive. You have to do through, that is how Dittus Boulder correlation comes, it is coming through lot of experiments. Okay. That is how experiments are important. Okay. So, nowadays if it is laminar, you can do through, if it is a complicated case, you can use CFD and generate. But for turbulence, it is little sticky again, because which turbulence model to use, so it is a problem. The point is, for laminar, you can generally give the closed form solutions. They are mathematically tractable, but for turbulent, generally it is not possible. Okay. That's, that's, that is what we need to understand. Why? Why it is not possible? No, no. In the background of what was taught yesterday, you should be able to tell. What were the governing equations when we did Reynolds stress averaging yesterday? We got 9, 6 additional terms. You remember minus rho u prime squared, minus rho u prime v prime, minus rho u prime w prime, minus rho v prime squared bar, minus rho w prime squared bar. They are all unknowns to us. So, that is precisely what makes life difficult for turbulent flow. Okay. So, this is in fact, this was plotted already. Yes. Laminar flow, how do I differentiate a flow is laminar or turbulent? Reynolds number. For all Reynolds numbers greater than 5 into 10 to the power of 5, less than 5 into 10 to the power of 5, it is laminar. I did not get, Professor, what is your question? No, this correlation is valid for cases of, of Prandtl number greater than 5. That's all. No, I think I did not reach you. Ha! Huh. For liquid metals, I have a different correlation. That's all it, That's all it means. That's all. It. Actually, for liquid metals, you will get R e x to the power of half and P r to the power of half. By scale analysis, also we can do it. Actually, okay. So then, then comes, then you get the average heat transfer coefficient. Ha! Huh. Here it is. Here it is. For liquid metals, you have 0.565. R e x to the power of half and P r to the power of half. So, for liquid metals, this is again laminar, this is again laminar. That is true, this is, okay, okay, okay. I am answering that question, I am answering that question. Churchill's correlation is independent of the range of the Prandtl numbers I am handling. It, valid, it is valid for both liquid metals and so, for all Prandtl numbers less than 0 0.05 only, this is valid. But you might, your question is, what should I do between 0 0.05 and 0 0.6? But generally, we do not come across a fluid. Liquid metals are very less. Okay. So, generally, we handle air. So, anything between 0 0.05 and 0 0.7 is not there. So, that is the reason. But if we come across, we can use Churchill's correlation. Okay. So, that, that is that is a good question. Okay. 
So, now uh, there are various correlations if I do not start heating, if I do not start because there we started heating right from the tip of the boundary uh, sorry the flat plate that is the leading edge, but here I am starting heating later on. So, velocity boundary layer overtakes the thermal boundary layer. So, for that case actually you can derive this from fundamental from fundamentals. So, but then this derivation definitely for u g will be beyond the scope. So, definitely we will not derive. I think you have how do you teach this? These correlations you give them the list or they are supposed to mug them? You give the handbook. Oh, great, great. So, then they are supposed to use them. Huh. In exams, how, how do they get the Hello? Oh, great. Achha, Kodan Raman, we have to see. Mumbai that. University, it is not allowed. In, a, in our days, we had to mug up these equations. So, that is <laughs> <laughs> It is good. If students are not allowed to mug, it is really nice. It is really nice. Achha. You tell me. Okay, uh, just looking at this graph, uh, I think we will appreciate that the heat transfer coefficient is higher for uh, turbulent flow. So, many times in applications, you know, if your boundary layer is grown sufficiently, it is uh, what do you say broken and then allowed to redevelop for the simple reason that you know, if the boundary layer is continuously growing there the heat transfer coefficient will drop, but if it is broken and allowed to reform, what will happen is there will be again a spike in the uh, heat transfer coefficient. So, the so called average heat transfer coefficient will be Go up. larger in case of uh, stripping of the boundary layer and reattachment. That is coming back to yesterday's thing laminar sub layer protein. See what we what do we do in a pipe, what do we do in a pipe? I think I, I, I have actually worked out the problem which you had asked, I have just worked out. I will when we get into internal flows, I will solve. What professor is saying is that, wh what do you do if you have to rough, roughen this, what do you do for this flat plate? You will put small, small sticks protruding from this. What professor is saying is that, you place them so close that, so close that it will not grow too thick, too thick, so that your heat transfer coefficients because as the boundary layer thickness is increasing, that is what yesterday your point was, but that does not mean that turbulent boundary layer thickness is smaller. What we are saying is that our boundary layer thickness we continue to try to keep turbulent, but that turbulent boundary layer thickness we try to keep it as small as possible, because we want to be in this domain. I think we have now Yeah, I am going to talk about that. PhDs are done on that. Okay, so in fact, uh, one very very useful example uh, is there in reactors, especially practically it is done. You know, uh, reactor will have several fuel assemblies, fuel rods, and they are held together by what you call a spacer grid. Spacer grid is nothing like your, you know, in olden days milk used to come in bottles, right? So, the bottles would be kept in a crate which has the circular uh, locations for the bottles to be held. Egg crate is one example. So, such a such a thing is there made of a metal and uh, the design is confidential. So, it is not revealed. So, what happens is uh, that is placed and designed in such a way that at specific locations where it is placed the boundary layer is stripped off. So, mixing of the flow also happens because of the uh, of the way the grid is designed mm. and stripping of the boundary layer happens. So, very good enhancement in heat transfer, transfer happens at for in a reactor you need better cooling. So, whatever it is heat transfer coefficient should be as high as possible and you are talking of flow areas or flow dimensions which are very very small mm. yeah, you know the pitch. Uh, between two fuel rods is of the order of a few millimeter, 30 millimeters or something like that. So, you are talking of sub channel dimensions which are very small mm. in that if the boundary layer is growing from all four, if I am imagining a uh, array of four rods, it is going to grow and completely occupy the 
channel area so the boundary layer is going to cause tremendous reduction in heat transfer so i should cut it off correct and allow it to reattach and in the process the design of the spacer grid makes life i mean it's is so complicated that you know how well it is mixing what is it going to do to the flow to enhance the heat transfer that is what is the design characteristic because otherwise it's nothing but a grid geometry or you know honeycomb geometry or whatever so enhancement due to good mixing and stripping of the uh, boundary layer both are there and it's very useful so let me complete see there is another application in gas turbine blade you want to cool the gas turbine blade these are the cooling passages because gas turbine gas temperatures are quite high so metal temperature the only we know that gas temperature has to be increased to increase the overall efficiency so but there is a metallurgical limit so the only way is to cool it this cooling passage if i take it like this you imagine a math stick put like this because we are discussing i thought i will discuss this in internal flows but now that so much discussion is happening let me finish it off here these are math sticks you imagine these are a math stick being placed what we are saying is that one math stick and the next math stick is placed so close that i am not allowing my boundary layer two things it is doing the placement of the math stick ensures that my laminar my boundary layer is turbulent laminar sublayer is broken that is what decides me the thickness or the height it is actually called as e and who decides the pitch which pitch is the optimal pitch that is the boundary layer i will not i should not be allowing my boundary layer to substantially grow of course all this comes at a cost pumping power will go up go up this is this is the this is the blindly one doesn't increase the uh, height and all 1 mm 2 mm why 1 mm and all when do we break the laminar sublayer i will come back to that when we take up that example yes can you please just go back to that huh. slide okay Heat transfer coefficient was this formula. Sorry. Yeah, this. Is. So as we see that uh, when flow is making, uh, when flow is passing over the plate, we are having the error of the boundary layer in laminar, and uh, when the compressive heat transfer flow is getting decreased. Hmm. Just you rightly said that when you breaking up this boundary layer, you will be having the rise of this heat transfer. Uh, rise of the heat transfer. So is it possible to break it in laminar flow so we can get the higher heat transfer coefficient? If you break it, it will become turbulent because you have broken. Okay. The, so the maybe what you are trying to say is, if I break in such a way that it is laminar sublayer, if I am still in the laminar sublayer, that will not serve my purpose at all. The second question is, sir, what? As I go along the boundary layer, I am having the uh, negative slope of this uh, heat, uh, heat transfer coefficient. Hmm. Uh, if I not allow the boundary layer to grow over the surface, hmm. should I not get the constant heat transfer from right from the beginning? that is what we are attempting to do see if i take it back here yeah if i take it back here what will happen what will happen between these two let us try to plot nusselt versus distance. distance what will happen here Decrease. what will happen here actually Decrease. it will decrease Decrease. and then again increase Decrease. it will again shoot up from here decrease it will come back to this and again it will shoot up so periodically but point is on an average i have increased sir, but if i were not to put this ribs my heat transfer coefficient would have been somewhere here sir, this yeah, is result number versus x sir, this is okay this is the done by because your boundary layer is growing hmm. and you are breaking up by putting the ribs over the surface Correct. that is okay Fine. but my question is instead of placing the ribs over the surface suppose i am make the change in the surface itself so as the boundary layer doesn't grow Fine. like if i am using the porous media yeah i would to, i would like to suck the boundary that is, that is what uh, aerodynamic people are doing that is possible they that are not trying suction. to develop the boundary boundary layer with suction that is also possible so uh, will it possible to yes. enhance the heat transfer coefficient but you see it's quite complicated in any application you see 
most of the applications that have honeycomb you come across you any application rightly, like that honeycomb you have rightly pointed out that thing usually uh, as far as i know the applications wise for increasing the heat transfer we usually in heat exchangers or in gas turbine blade cooling or the examples what he took in nuclear the easiest thing is to roughen the surface roughen the surface blowing means i have to i have to i have to locate them appropriately see i will give you an opposite example you told suction i am going to give you blowing there are several ways of cooling my surface same gas turbine blade how do i how do i cool it in another way there are holes throughout flow comes out flow comes out how do you cool your potato you take the potato from your cooker how do you how do you how does your wife or mother peel it out have you any time peeled a potato how do you peel it out when you take it out of the cooker you will put it under tap you will keep it very low flow rate and you will peel what what exactly you are doing there you are creating a small film such that the my hand doesn't know that my potato is hot i am having a small film around it with cold water so what exactly i am doing i am blowing i am not sucking your example was suction i am saying here blowing same thing for gas turbine blade also i can blow it and still make it cool so there are various ways in which you can operate yes uh, richard you have taken a very right application over here that Blade. Hmm. So when I observe the distance between the uh, blade and the casing, that may be in terms of house. The distance between ah, the blade, be tip, blade tip and the yes. casing. So if I am having the boundary layer grows over the surface of the casing. No, but the no, no, no. It's not like that. Hmm. I have to now place my holes such that I have made a proper film. It is not hmm. going to be one hole. It is going to be several holes. No. and optimization of that holes is involved i am talking about i think we will stop here because we will we will discuss we, we will go for a tea and then come back